All right, so in the blink of an eye, we're back here at the ball, and I'm delighted to be joined by FC Alaman manager Paul Jones. We're here today to discuss something special that'll be happening during pre season the FC Alaman Summer Festival of Football. Must be something you're looking forward to, Paul? Yeah, very much so. Um, you know, the, the sun's putting us in the mood, isn't it? You know, we're 10 days since the end of the season or so, and we're, we're already getting excited about what next season might look like in, in this. Uh, this tournament just before our season is due to start it should be a, a really good way to, to get us all up for it and certainly drives hopefully a lot of excitement in our playing group but also hopefully in the supporter base of not just people on the Isle of Man but also hopefully a good number of people from off Ireland who'll come over to watch. Yeah and we've got three teams visiting the island we'll play two of them um, so the three teams coming over we've got Chester FC We've also got Radcliffe FC and Lancaster City. Uh, we face Chester, for, they're the first team we face. They finished 10th in the Vanarama National League North last season. And for anyone who doesn't know, that's the league below the National League or the old conferences, people will probably better know it. Yeah. Um, they're two steps above us currently and just one below the National League. So what challenge do you expect them to offer? A huge one. <laughs> it's massive. Um, you know, they've, they've got a really fantastic fan base. Um, so I'm expecting a lot of Chester supporters over for that weekend. And, um, you know, they're, they're a, a big club in non-league football. Um, I remember playing there 25 years ago when they were still a football league team and, um, you know, really enjoyed playing at, the, at that ground. And, um, you know, they'll have big plans to push on and, and, and try and become a league club again. Um, you know, they're only two leagues away from us, but they're only two leagues away from League Two as well, aren't they, in the other direction? So, um, a, a big club with, with playing at a very good level, there'll be a really stiff test for us um, just a week before our season starts. And yeah, it, you know, it's a fantastic opportunity for our players to test themselves against really good, good footballers. Um, so, yeah, really excited by that one. Yeah, and the other team that we'll play in the tournament is Radcliffe FC. Uh, they have just been promoted as champions of the Northern Premier League, the league above us, yeah. uh, last season. And obviously, that is a team that that's the level we're aspiring to get to, that Northern Premier League level. How do you see them being a, t a different kind of test to Chester? Um, they'll be flying, won't they? You know, they're, they're, so they're two leagues above us, Chester are three leagues yeah. above us. Um, and now they've gone into that kind of like next tier up into National League North and you know Bernard and Jono who a lot of people might remember from the Class of 92 Salford documentary you know that follows those two guys around everywhere but they've done a fantastic job with Ratcliffe and they're absolutely flying this year and I'm sure with those two as joint managers they'll be looking to go again this season and um, a really stiff test again you know if they can keep their squad together they've got some fantastic players and I watch their highlights every now and again keeping an eye of the standard a little bit up, um, further above from where we are and um, yeah a really stiff test for us but a, a great one to have and um, you know as I say a week before our season starts you, you couldn't ask for any better prep really than playing two teams who are in National League North and if we can put good displays in, in those games out then hopefully it, it gives us full of confidence really into our league season commencing a week later. So when this comes out a lot of people will find out that managers and officials from these sides have already been to the island and the club have shown them around you know possible sites for training camps exploring the hospitality sector you know what that can offer for not just the players the staff and the fans um, and also seeing the bowl itself here and from when we've talked to them they've all been extremely comp complimentary of the island and its facilities for a pre-season trip as a founder member of the club yourself how rewarding is it to hear that clubs of that level have chosen to come here after seeing what the island has to offer? Yeah, it's, it's great, isn't it? I think, you know, people as old as me and a bit older will remember the old steam packet and old, 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 old cool tournament where you had Man City, Newcastle, you know, some big names and Bolton big teams, and Bolton, Burnley, when we beat Burnley on here yeah. one nil, I was fortunate to play in that game. And lots of people have said to me over the last kind of four or five years, wouldn't it be good to have that sort of tournament again? And maybe we're not going to get kind of championship and league one clubs coming to the Isle of Man in pre-season, you know, but we are, it's great to have the interest from, from top clubs in non-league football wanting to come to our island and prepare for their season ahead. And I don't think there's many better places, um, in, in Britain really for them to come and do it. It's a, it's a great 
environment, there's some great facilities, the locals are usually unbelievably friendly um, and, and hopefully their fans come and enjoy the experience and behave and, and contribute to it being a really successful weekend for our island. So it's great, hopefully it's the beginning rather than the end, hopefully it's, it turns into something bigger and better over the years ahead and, and the teams that do come have a great experience, it sets them up for a fantastic push towards their season. Um, and not only that, but we get a really good experience from a player and fan perspective and an organisational perspective to see what it takes to play two or three leagues above from where we are at the minute. So it's, it's part of what we wanted to do. It's the next part of the jigsaw piece. And I know people like Dicko and yourselves have done an awful lot of work to get this over the line. So thanks to them. And um, hopefully we can use it as a springboard for you know, future pre-seasons that it turns into a bigger and better thing for our community and our football club um, to showcase the island um, to as many people as possible. Yeah, and you know, you mentioned there, um, Chester obviously have a big fan base. All the teams coming over have a big fan base. They expect to bring, when we've spoken to them, they say they expect to bring near enough a thousand people with them, each team. I think that's mental really to come to the island, you know, all the clubs are within a stone's throw away of the island as well and getting here through the steam packet and things like that as yeah. well. How, how big do you think this will be for the island and, and just like the local economy in general as well? Well, it's, it, it is big, isn't it? You know, if, if team, even if between them they're bringing 1,000, 1,500 people for a weekend, that's a huge amount of money coming into our economy. And, um, you know, we need to look after them well as a community to make sure that we can do it again, but they need to look after us well as well and, you know, and respect the community and respect the, the welcome that they're going to have and make sure that we want to do it again in the future. So it's a two way street, isn't it? You know, the, the, the better it goes for everyone concerned, the more likely it'll happen again in the future. And if it happens again in the future, hopefully it'll be bigger and better and it just snowballs a little bit. And, you know, part of the club being in, in existence is to have these ripple effects into our community, some of which are economic. Um, so, you know, we don't just want the a thousand two thousand visiting fans to get on board with it hopefully you know back in the day when the steam packet festival was going you know there was lots of local people that went to watch as many matches as possible and, and i'm sure the pricing will make that easy for people to do so you know local people on the island who are here that weekend it's a chance to come and watch not just fc Isle man but three top teams in non-league football who are all aspiring to get towards kind of national league league two sort of level and you know it's a great opportunity to come and watch and be involved in that and and that's good for everybody um, and it also hopefully makes the club a little bit more sustainable for next season um, but also that, that wider visitor spend in a time when it they might not be getting quite so much as they would through TT or MGP then it's only a good thing but it's only a good thing if we all respect it and we all make the most of it and we all make sure that it's more likely to happen in the years ahead because a one-off is no good for anybody it's about building on this for for years and years and years and you know we need a good start and we're all responsible for making it a good start so hopefully that's what we have and, and we can push on and, um, and and make it more likely to happen in the future so it'd be rude not to, you know we've got you here it'd be rude not to talk about what you expect from this tournament as the manager of FC Alaman. So what are your goals for this festival? Are you, it's going to be intense, you know, two games over the two days, over the weekend. You'll have, will you have an extended squad? Will you be looking at new players to bring in during this time? How will you be using this tournament to develop the players? Um, well, it, it's happening probably a week before our season starts. So it's, for me, it's a, it's a fine tuning process and, and, like a lot of the decisions probably should have been done already by that point. You know, I don't want to be waiting until the week before the season. Um, we want to go and give a good account of ourselves with the group that we've got available. Um, you know, some of that will be dictated by by holiday and you know leave and all that sort of stuff that players may may have already got booked. Um, but for me, it's about getting us ready to start the the week after as well as we possibly can for you know a big push in in the Northwest Counties Premier Division. Um, you know, people will have earned the right to start those games in the five weeks before that through pre-season. Um, we're looking at have, having a really tight um, training group for pre-season um, to, to build as much consistency as we can. So yeah, like it, I think the the decision making and the opportunities will have happened before that, if I'm honest. Um, the people that, that wear the shirt will have earned the right to be there and hopefully will be the main group that we're going to work with for the rest of the season. And, and therefore, I expect, expect some really 
strong displays against tough opposition to make sure we're in a really good place to start um, the week after in our first league game. So, so that's probably how I'm going to approach it. Um, I still wouldn't mind a couple more days rest before I have to think that too far ahead. But um, yeah, really looking forward to it and, and um, hopefully we can use it as a springboard um, rather than the pinnacle of our season. Like it, It's a nice thing to do but it's a nice thing to do to prepare for our season, not for it to be the be-all and end-all and the focus of our pre-season. All right, Paul, thanks for your time today. Thanks for taking the time to talk about the tournament and I'm sure we'll see you again soon. Cheers, Dean. Cheers.